Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Kodak Vision 3 250D is what we're discussing today because it is far too dangerous to go anywhere near 800T at the moment. 250D is part of the Vision 3 line of Kodak cinema film, the same kind of cinema film that was used to shoot Oppenheimer and of course, that famous scene where Oppenheimer hymered all over his ops. As far as I know, there are four different stocks in the Vision 3 line for cinematographers and broke photographers alike to choose from. 50D, 250D, 200T, and 500T. The numbers, of course, refer to their ISO rating, and you might notice that they are bookended with either a T or a D. That just refers to that stock's white balance or temperature, either tungsten balance or damn it, Bobby. Shooting cinema film has been a popular alternative for film photography over the past couple of years because it delivers that cinematic look right out of the box or real I guess but at the end of the day 250d is a motion picture film it's meant to be vigorously run through your camera to create the illusion of motion which means that shooting it for still photography can be a bit tricky but we film photographers don't do things because they're easy so let's get started I have shot plenty of 250d in the past in both 8 mm and 16 mm forms and I guess 400d if you want to count that but I never actually considered it for still photography until last year when rising film prices made my brain swell with blood and I just decided to bang out a roll in my contacts t2 I lean a lot of my color negative work pretty warm I just really like the orange and brown look quite a bit it makes images feel nostalgic to me that's why Kodak gold has been my shit for the past couple of years not in 120 though that stuff is premium grade A ass. But without a doubt in my mind, the results I got back from the 250D that I shot last year on the road were some of the cleanest, warmest, and best I had seen from that collection. And from there, not only did my brain return to a normal size, a peanut, but I began to wonder, could 250D actually replace Kodak Gold as my default color negative film? Not to be dramatic, but I had to know the truth that I had been so blind to all these years. That is the fastest I have ever loaded this camera. So I packed some away for a quick trip to Washington Daylight Color with the prettiest person that I know. Not a bad start. This photo is great. Maybe a bit too much headroom, but to give you an idea of how warm the stock is overall, here it is compared to a similar shot at the same location on expired Natura 1600. It seems warmer in a more magenta way. Anyway, as we sat next to a window on a train that someone had clearly sucked on recently, I started to think about my first impressions of this stock, even though I've shot it before. So it's really more of a second chance of a first impression. It's warm and pretty. Warmer and prettier than real life. And this shot looks sandier than a loose turkey sandwich on the desert planet Arrakis, but I dig it. It's the look I strive for. In this shot of Monica, probably wondering if this whole film photography thing is just a phase, the colors pop where they need to without being overbearing. Speaking of sand and bread, the grain on this film stock is tolerable and the color balance is very easy to work with. If I were to compare it to Kodak Gold, I would say the main difference is increased sharpness and the shadows remain a little bit more neutrally balanced, whereas on Gold they seem to go a bit more magenta. Anyway, at the greatest symbolic representation of size does matter, we ran away scared and hid in the Natural History Museum. She is as natural as she is history museum. Where Monica was as excited as ever to see the giraffe in the lobby. And we even found one of our dog Baxter's ancestors. Here's a shot that I love. The thing with 250D being a daylight balanced film is that when you're inside under artificial light, everything is just going to go super warm and kind of spiral out of control, just like my life. Orange warmth can be kind of counterbalanced in post to some degree, but I'd say if you do decide to shoot in these settings with this film stock, just lean into it. It's not a bad look.
After taking a photo of this life-size bear that I could totally wrestle to the ground and make my bitch, I looked down at my Leica M6, because I do that a lot, and realized everything I was shooting was at around 1 30th and wide open at f2. The stock is 250 ISO, which isn't exactly the fastest halide slinger in the west. But then again, it was designed to be shot in bright daylight conditions, not dim, musty-ass museum lighting. I couldn't really find too much info about reciprocity on this film stock, but then again, I didn't try very hard because this channel is pretty low effort. If you're shooting at night, apparently no corrections are needed up to about one second, but anything above that is kind of just a shot in the dark. I hate myself. Perhaps a cheat code with this film stock is to shoot the color blue. Since it naturally leans so warm and spray tan orange, shooting the complementary color blue looks really nice when it's paired with it. Anyway, after seeing that a 35mm Nikon and Kodak Ektachrome are now classified by the Natural History Museum as old ass archaeological finds, I got sad again and left to go home. Here's the thing with this film stock. 250D looks so good because it's for a highly specialized process. Most color negative film stocks use C41 chemicals to be developed, whereas the entire Vision 3 line uses the same process used to develop film for motion picture cinema, ECN2. And the hard hitting truth is, most labs will not do it for you because they don't like you. It's a much more complicated development process to my understanding, and most labs will not take it on because they just don't have the infrastructure for it. Therefore, you have a couple alternative options. You can develop at home with ECN2 or even C41. 250D is compatible with both, but there is an extra step you'll have to consider. Removing the Remjet, which is a layer of black carbon on the back of the film that kind of looks like melted black licorice, but you must never sample the forbidden licorice. The Remjet layer is designed to cut down light that is passing through the film, which then bounces off the back of the pressure plate or the back of the camera. And then the Remjet is designed to further block out that out of focus light from hitting the red layer of the emulsion. The Remjet layer is also known as the anti-halation layer. Halations are these red blobs that are around bright, contrasty areas of your image. With a strong enough Remjet layer, they will not appear on your film, or at least appear very minimally. These two not popular boys bothering you? No. No, it's fine. You want I should explain the chat? I don't know shit about developing because I'm a jackass who doesn't practice what he preaches. But to my limited understanding, the Remjet just washes off your film with a pre-bath of water and it kind of comes out as this inky black fluid, which might make you wonder if you trapped a squid in your developing tank and it's having the time of its life busting a nut left and right in there. If you develop 250D in C41, like a total baller who doesn't give a fuck about Kodak's rules, then you might see an increase in contrast. And some people have reported color shifting towards the blue-green side of things, which can likely be corrected out. The ECN2 process itself, to my understanding, is designed to be lower contrast and lower gamma to benefit a more cinematic workflow and color grading. Personally, I really like the ECN2 look of things. I tend to lean my work uh, a lot less contrasty and more towards the flat profile side of things. And seemingly, it gives more room and flexibility to fix up your photos that are taken in, you know, overcast or not the greatest lighting conditions. But that might just be perceived flexibility rather than actuality. Anyway, I found myself out in the forest for some motorcycle camping, where there are lots of brown trees. And you already know how much I love to photograph the color brown. That's why I always bring my camera to the porta potty. Irregardless of flies swarming you while you're at your most vulnerable, what about 250D in medium format 120? Good question, f wad. My camping buddy Tim also had the same questions. What'd you bring for that? Um, motion picture film, actually. Sweet, what stock? 250D. 35 millimeter, though? No, I got some uh, in 120 medium format. It's cut from their like IMAX stock. So they took like what, 70 mil? Cut it down? Yeah, so it's got the um, sprocket holes on the side. I think they just took it and put it on a, like a roll of 120. A 
After loading up the 250D in 120, I wasn't in any rush to pound it out just yet. So while I waited for the lighting to improve, I housed a Sheboing Boing of the fruit variety and thought about the medium format 250D I had shot recently in the Pacific Northwest that turned out to be some of the best work I produced in that collection. This shot is a little deceiving because I had to do a lot of paint work. Tim's bike wouldn't stop leaking oil everywhere and I thought it kind of ruined the nice photos of nature. So I spent hours meticulously painting it out. Got some sparkling water. By the warm and sultry, passionate looks of it, it really seems like the IMAX version of this stock looks damn near identical to the 35mm version, which is more than I can say about Kodak Gold in 120. I don't know why I took this photo. This shot of a rooted tree stem kind of looks like a Thanksgiving turkey. The leg here and this part being the meaty core. If that turns you on for some reason, I don't know, maybe you should get some help or just buy the print on my print shop. So IMAX 250D is great and all, but what if you're like me and you don't develop at home because you're afraid that you might give into your darkest temptations and try drinking the chemicals? Well, you have some options. More and more labs are starting to pop up that will do ECN2 for you. It's still not very common, but if your local lab does do it for you, you should support them and tell them you appreciate it and maybe give the lab tech a kiss on the cheek or something, I don't know. The lab that I use to develop all the work that I show in this video is Midwest Film Co. If you're overseas, Silver Sols is a good option as well. Oh, dude, I smell it. I had a uh, gas station chicken nuggets last night. That fart has no personality. Anyway, after waking up semi early because there was a bear in the campground tearing apart people's shit, I figured why not slam out some sunrise photos. And to no one's surprise, 250D holds up pretty well. Even on this shot, sure, the light was harsh and it generated some halation kick up, but it's kind of nice in my opinion. I even decided to go a little crazy and try the chocolate one filter for more straight up poo tones. And the rest of the campground was just as excited as me. At the top of the mountain and Tim's bike leaking black sludge everywhere and ruining all my photos, I killed off the roll once and for all. The thing with 250D for still photography is that it's all bulk rolled. And if you bulk roll, you can actually kind of save some money. It's no secret that color negative film is getting kind of pricey these days. But if you can buy a 400 foot roll of 250D and parse it out to about 70 rolls, you're spending about $5 a roll. That value is gonna be pretty hard to beat for color. And as I already explained, the quality of 250D is quite high. I don't know sh about bulk rolling 120, so don't ask me about it. I did get my 250D in 120 from eBay though. But before we close out this video, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What are you gonna do with all your sick Kodak Vision 3 250D shots when they're all developed? Show them off? 
throw them in the portfolio. Well, what better way for everyone to have access to your portfolio than through a website with Squarespace. I use Squarespace to host my own photography portfolio because getting it set up was easier than apple pie thanks to their custom building modules and simple drag and drop nodes. I was able to easily arrange images next to one another to sample my portfolio layout all at a mouse clicks notice, which made it easy to establish what order of images worked and what did not. Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates you can choose from and furnish your new site with Squarespace's intuitive user interface that allows you to build portfolios portfolios, blogs, and even web shops. And if you run into any snags during the process, you can check out Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support to get you back on track in no time. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So the ultimate question, is 250D going to replace Kodak Gold as my default color negative film? Yeah, I think so. It's just too good. Every time I scan and invert my shots, I mean, the image is damn near where I want it to be already. Warm, vibrant when it needs to be, and tonally quite flat. Occasionally you'll get some slight halation, but I choose to look at those artifacts as image enhancers. Plus, everyone loves a little bit of halation anyway, right? That's why people add it to their digital video footage all the time, in case you were unsure if we were all actually living in hell. Sure, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get Vision 3 film developed, but to me, the results are more than worth it. And you gotta find a way to suffer for your art somehow anyway. If in the future you catch me bulk rolling 250D and shooting it pretty consistently, I wouldn't be surprised. Though it probably will not happen for a while, I still have like 30 rolls of Kodak Gold to get through after I panic bought a couple bricks of it last year because I'm a frightened little film photography sheep and Kodak loves me for it.